What's up guys? Welcome to another video. I know it's been a really long time. Good heavens, I've been just massively busy. Good grief. I mean, it's like summer ends and, and it's just crazy getting back to school and everything. Hopefully you guys caught my update video. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope everything's going well. Um, got another video for you. I told you that I would be doing a type of cooler controller um, those of us like I said I got a couple of hobbies here I got obviously this electronics one but I also have uh, the beer brewing uh, hobby so a lot of us that started doing kegging or putting it into you know um, the pep old Pepsi cans and you know Pepsi uh, kegs and stuff like that so that you know you don't have to bottle and do all that stuff well you need a place to refrigerate it well the best type of refrigeration because it does it really fast is a freezer or what's called a keyser when you turn it into a keg freezer but anyway you want it to refrigerate you don't want it to freeze because obviously it would freeze uh, the liquid solid so you need to design some sort of controller now you can usually buy these they tend to be kind of pricey for me they're kind of you know they get close to a hundred dollars if not over a hundred dollars uh, to buy uh, one of these controllers. Well, obviously, since I'm an electronics guy, and those of you that watch are electronics people as well, let's just build our own. Might as well. So, what I'm going to do is I'll be taking you through kind of uh, how I, how I built this thing. I'm going to show you the circuit for the uh, controller itself that senses the temperature and then controls um, a relay that will control an outlet, and then I'll end up going into the software and then finally we'll have the demo video where you actually get to see how it's all uh, put together so put together and wired up and how I got the power and everything for it so let's jump in to the controller why don't we and that's what uh, the schematic is that you're looking at right now is this is going to be for the controller side of things so obviously we've got the good old pick 16F886, uh, nice large memory and everything. You, I probably, you probably didn't need to go this big. You probably could have done this with uh, a little 676 or whatever, but I just, you know, it was whatever I had laying around at the moment and I just grabbed it and threw it in. So you could do this, you know, you could probably hone this down to, you know, a specific micro that would have just the perfect amount of memory and the perfect amount of IO. And, you know, it doesn't matter for me. I it just, it was just something I had to throw together with the parts I had laying around in my lab. So, you know, some of this is kind of a hodgepodge, but it does work and it works well. So anyway, got the good old 886 going on here. What we have right here, um, there was a good, uh, good man that uh, sent me in my last video. I did a shout out to him, uh, but sent me one of the little 16 by two uh, dot matrix LCD displays. So that's what we're going to be hooking up today. What those are, and I believe that it is the HD that's uh, H is in Hilo, D is in Delta, 44780 compliant. It does the, uh, that's the, you know, it's that uh, Hitachi uh, protocol is what it runs. So most all displays that I've found, you know, run this Hitachi uh, protocol on them. So anyway, so that's basically how we're hooking this up. So the pinout is very similar to one that I found, uh, Crystal Fonts of America, which I'll put a link in the description. That place is an awesome place to get displays from if you if you want to get some displays. They, I think, I believe they manufacture them themselves. So they have a huge uh, selection. But I just grabbed a random data sheet. Let me pull it over for you. Here's just a random data sheet from one of their small uh, little LCDs. This one has uh, has it on the side. Uh, the one that I was donated is a little bit different. But basically, um, when you come down through here, let's see, do they actually give me a pinout? There we go. The pinouts are pretty much exactly the same for these uh, HD 44780 uh, protocol displays. And those of you, let's see, here we go. See, HD 44780. So that's what it is protocol it's run they all have pretty much the same exact pin out so you you know if you watch my LCD video I could put a link in the description to that too I do a whole video on how to control these and everything but basically this is all it is just a little 16 by 2 uh, nothing real complicated um, in fact actually no I take that back the one that I use is not 16 by 2 sorry it's it's even smaller it's a little I think it's only 8 I think it's half that size so it's a little 8 character display oh I tell you I'm I told you it was busy I'm losing my marbles Oh, I can't even remember what I did. Well, it doesn't help that the only symbol that I had in my symbol list uh, in EagleCAD was a 16 by 2. So that, that, that threw me off. I apologize. Anyway, 
But I digress, right? Okay, so what we got going on over here is obviously we've got you know power to pin two and ground to pin one and ground to pin five. That's the uh, read bit because we we don't need to read anything from the display because you could have a deal where you know you're updating the display and then uh, let's say uh, you know you put characters in the display let's say somehow and then you you could read them from the display we're not really going to be doing much reading we're just going to be writing so we're just going to pull that one to active low uh, because we don't need to enable the the read function then the next one is we've got for pin three we've got a uh, resistor divider what this is and you can play with this um, this is one that yeah, worked pretty good for me uh, but you can you can play with this so these resistor virus what this is, is this is actually normally you would take like this resistor down here or actually probably be safer take this one up here and make it a uh, potentiometer make it a trimmer so that way you can trim the trim pot and then you can change the contrast of the screen make it darker or lighter and so what you do is uh, I just put in a fixed resistor because I don't know those two resistances together gave me the voltage that I needed for the contrast that I liked so that way I didn't have to put a pot in there and then worry about you know having to set it or whatever worried about taking space up on the board you know I just put a resistor in so not a big deal there and then the rest is pretty much self-explanatory there's the four bits going in there's the two uh, read write bits or whatever oh we got people coming in so we got all that hooked up now over here we've got the temperature probe is going to go into RA0 okay and I'll show you that piece of circuitry here in a minute but that's where the temp probe is basically going to go into and we're just going to read that analog value and run that through the internal ADC module to uh, get and we'll do some math on it which we'll see in the programming section to do uh, to, to convert that to a, to a temperature so and then of course we got our normal 10k pull up for our mem clear and all that fun jazz um, TP7, TPA, well, the reason I put those in there, that's for um, the program data, program clock, so you can program this thing. Um, so you can hook up, you know, an external program. Now this one, what I did was, since I was using just some perf board, is what we call it, you know, that board with holes in it where you can solder up anything you want to, I just soldered a socket on, so that way I could use just a, uh, you know, one of those ZIF program modules, you know. Uh, so that's how I programmed it, which you'll see. I'll show you how I did that in the demo side of all this. But if you were to solder it in hardcore, make sure and leave yourself some test points or something for the uh, data and clock so you can, you can still program the thing uh, using the in-circuit serial programming. Then I've got a relay uh, pin that I brought out, and that brings us to our relay control. So what we're going to do is we're going to control a relay with this, which if you watch my relays video, you'll kind of understand the circuitry more. I go more in depth on how to do it. Got our protection diode across the coil of the of the uh, relay, so that way we don't blow up our FET here. And then we've also got a little FET. I just used the generic IRF, you know, 510. It's probably overkill for this because it's a very tiny relay. But, hey, like I said, I was just grabbing stuff. Just whatever I had laying around at the time, I just picked it up and made this thing. So I used good old standard IRF 510, which is international rectifier part. Um, use one of these little relays. These are a uh, finder relay is what these are from the company finder. They make a really good little uh, low voltage. It's like a little 6 volt, which you can run it at 5 volt. It doesn't care. Uh, little relay. And so anyway, wired it up to where what we're going to do is we're going to bring line voltage in this side. These are AC rated. They're like 240 volt AC. They're like 240 volt 4 amp rated or something like that. They're they're pretty beefy for the size. They're a little small PCB relay, but you know, they're pretty beefy. Um, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to bring in line voltage onto this side, which would be the 120 volt, at least where I'm from, we use 120 volt um, here in the United States. So we're going to have 120 volt coming into this side, or 110, whatever, 120, 110, 150, whatever it is, you know, <laughs> that single phase voltage coming in. Then on the other side is going to be the load side, which means that's the side that's going to go to our receptacle. And I'll go more in depth on how this all gets wired up uh, when I show the demo, because I'll show you where all the wires go. But so 120 volt unswitched will come into this side. And then this is going to be the switched, or what we call the switch leg, load side, which then goes to our uh, receptacle device. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put in like a receptacle, a plug, so you can plug the fridge into this thing, or freezer, whatever it is. Plug it into our device. So we're going to put a little receptacle just like you find in your wall outlet is what we're going to put in there. And like I said, I'm going off of United States standards, so this isn't uh, 240 volt or whatever in 50 hertz systems and stuff like that. So those of you, you might want to think about maybe getting a two-pole relay or something like that where you can switch both phases of the uh, of the 240 volt if you live in another country. You know, you live in, you know, 
not in the United States where you guys have 240 volt and 50 hertz systems. You can this this relay will work, and you can get a you know obviously as you can see this relay is a two pole relay. I just tied the two poles together, so you could very well have two you know your two lines for your 240 volt. Bring one to one one phase to one side, and the other phase to the other side, and switch a uh, 240 volt outlet as well with this same relay. So pretty slick. Now we'll go down to our temp thermal management, which, oh, wow, look at it. It's so complicated. <laughs> anyway, I'm being sarcastic, by the way, can't you tell? Um, what we're going to have is we're going to have a thermistor, which I've picked out. We'll have a thermistor that's right here. And, um, in fact, actually, I think I have the data sheet on it. I can probably show you it. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, it's a it's a GE NTC thermistor. That's what this little guy is. And this one, the one that I picked, uh, if I remember right. Let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Series, I mean, blah, blah, blah. Remember, I think mine was the MA200, well, 200, I think was what mine was. Oh, here we go. Here's the actual code. So mine was the MA, I think it was like 100... FA, I think, and then it was a 232. It's one of the two, two uh, 2.252 K ohm was what it was, and it's just a little five percent, I think, or something like that. That was the one that I chose, but basically, I chose the two, you know, 2252 ohm one. So the 2.2 K is the one that I chose. But anyway, pretty good little thermistor. What's nice is it's very long, it comes on a very long cord because obviously, see the lengths. I think I got, I may have gotten the 300, that way it was the longest, biggest one that I could find. So anyway, but it, uh, you can get them, I think mine's like a meter long or something like that. Let's go down, where does it tell me the length? Uh, oh, well anyway, I'm not going to waste time reading the length, of the, oh here we go, standard dimensions, there's a, oh 24 inches, so they're two foot long. So I got the two foot long uh, version. So anyway, so okay, so that's pretty much all there is to the thermal management, just a resistor divider, you know, and we'll just take that over into the analog uh, A0 input for our ADC, and we'll just ADC this is all we're going to do. Like I said, this isn't going to probably be like, you know, super accurate, considering the fact that the ADC on this is only 10 bit, you know, it's not like one of them big 32 or 64 bits where you get some really fine granularity and you can kind of absorb any you know offsets and the resistances now if you did want to make this and get this uh, as accurate as you possibly could um, what you could do is you could take and put a potentiometer here instead of a fixed resistor you know put a 10k uh, pot or maybe a 20k pot in there and then what you could do is then you center it center the pot around 10k and then when you you know put this all together and get your software going and you're calculating with 10k as a value you know in your calculation then you could take and you know get a standard uh, put it I don't know put it in a freezer where you know the temperature or something like that, or put it in the room where you know a thermometer the room where you know the room temperature or something and then twist the pot until you get the temperature that you you know that you're at that you're at and basically kind of zero out any error you could do that too to try to minimize error but for now you know I yeah I really don't care and really if you're trying to get it as close to you know freezing as possible because that's kind of the whole point you want your you want your your beer to be about 33 degrees you know you want it to be right above freezing but you know th and this get this will get close i mean it'll get really close i would set it for like 34 or 35 or something like that and and then see what your error is and then maybe tweak it on down from there one thing that i didn't add to this that i probably should have is i would probably do the same setup here but instead of using a thermistor, use a potentiometer, or um, you could use a rotary switch maybe and hook it up to some of these pins and have basically a selector. See, the way this one is configured is since I know that I'm not gonna be playing with the temperature, I'm not gonna be running it up and down all the time, so I just made it where it's it's a fixed whatever in the software, which I'll we'll show you in the coding section. In the software, you'll I actually just set that I want like 34 degrees or 35 degrees you know, in the software, and then it just regulates to that. You know, so if you wanted to add some some external control of some sort, you could take and um, hook up maybe another analog and do just a resistor divider thing, except put one of these as an external potentiometer, let's say, that you can put a knob on, and then based on, you know, 
that when you twist the knob it'll you know maybe change the temperature setting you know you could do something like that i mean this is totally up for grabs like i said this was just something fun that i wanted to make figured i'd share it with you guys so i also have this main power what i want to do is obviously we got to have power so i show kind of a little connector that we're going to hook up five volts and ground and i'll show you how i came up with uh, the idea of of a power supply because you gotta remember we're going to plug this into 120 volt ac so you know and this guy runs off a of five volt dc so we, we need the five volt dc to come from somewhere well, i don't want to have to plug the unit into the wall and then also plug in a wall wart or something that'll give me the the five volts you know but i'll show you how you can you can hack another piece of equipment basically i'm gonna i'm gonna do my first bit of hacking i'm gonna cannibalize something else instead of building it from scratch <laughs> so you'll get to see that in the uh in the demo video as well i think this video has ran long enough this is basically just the hardware overview very simple this drawing i will put up on the uh share i'll put this up probably when i do the code video so stay tuned look for the the software video that'll be after this one and once i get the software video posted i'll then post all of this uh the software for it i'll also post the uh, drawing that you see here i'll post this up so if any of you guys want to take it and run with it and modify it change it do whatever you want with it to make it yours have at it my as you know all my code and everything is pretty much all open source um whatever everything that i post is totally for you guys so you can you can play with it mod it cut it up use it elsewhere whatever you want to do with it so with that guys i think that'll be probably it for for this video so stay tuned for the uh the software one that'll be coming up as well as the demo one where I actually will show you it uh, all taken apart and show you how everything's connected and hooked up and wired and and built for y'all so all right guys well like subscribe share that always helps me out it helps me uh, buy new tools and new uh, components and things for you guys in fact like the Bluetooth video and uh, the Raspberry Pi video um, the Arduino video all that stuff has been purchased based on you guys' likes you're sharing um, all your views that you guys do so I really appreciate that and so if you want to help support this and keep it going give me a like share it with your friends and do all that fun stuff you can also follow me on Twitter and instructables I'll probably have when I get done with all, all three of these videos the, the software the hardware and the, the demo I'll probably post Post this all on uh, Instructables, so you can always uh, share with Instructables. So if you have friends that are on Instructables but not YouTube, you can still share uh, the videos with them that way if they're an Instructables uh, person. So anyway, guys, that ought to do it. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. See you guys.